Major funding for this program is provided by grants from HSH Nordbank and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, Allied Partners, Murray Hill Properties, Bank of America, SJP Properties, Greenberg Traurig. Additional funding for this program is made possible by grants from Arbor Realty Trust, BRT Realty Trust, Burden LLP, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Habitats, City Investment Fund, Cushman and Wakefield, Eastern Consolidated, Essex Capital Partners, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, McSam Hotel Group, Must Development LLC, Newmark Knight Frank, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal Inc., Signature Bank, Sydney Fetner Associates, Studley, Stonehenge Partners, Swig Equities, Extreme Contracting and Deconstruction. Hello, my name is Michael Stoll, a host of the Stoller Report, Real Estate Trends in the Tri-State Region. Baby boomers are getting older, people are getting older, and there's a lot of seniors. Fortunately, there are seniors, but unfortunately, there aren't too many senior care places to live. And many people, and most of my viewers, have no idea about the senior care system. So what have I done today? I've brought together the guys who really understand this business, the gurus of senior housing, senior living. My guests include David Reese, CEO of Senior Care Management. Close, De Development. Senior <laughs> Care Development. Bill Sims, <laughs> a CEO of Herbert J. Sims Company. Uh, Tom Newell, the 800-pound gorilla, not literally, <laughs> uh, president of Sunrise Senior Living, and uh, Dan Civic, uh, CEO of, uh, now I'm in good shape, Pembroke. President of Ross Camp Management. President of Ross Camp. I apologize. Mm -hmm. What is senior housing? You know, people, you know, you go to a website, <laughs> and uh, I did it before, you know, it says, you put in senior housing, and it says 55 and over, then there's a next level, you know, then there's assisted living, then there's, what are these different levels? Well, senior care housing really uh, spans a big continuum of care, from independent living to assisted living to skilled nursing to some communities like a CCRC, continuing care, retirement so, community. So let, for my viewers, let, let's, you know, we, we don't play inside <laughs> baseball, and you're the guy who finances a lot of the things, and let's talk about you own, you own and operate places over here, and you operate in the region, you're in Connecticut. Tell my, <coughs> my viewers, what are these places, okay? You're 55 years of age, what's that called? That's Active no. adult. That's yeah. an active, active adult, adult community. But we wouldn't usually consider that senior house. No, no, we no. That's right. active adult no, but community. That, but people always hear that. And that's that's, the, that's usually their first retirement home. And that's normally, in many cases, somebody who's working. Sixty-five. Yeah. yeah. Retired. <clears throat> kids are out of the house. Don't want the big house. But don't want to be. But don't they're not seniors yet. Don't want yet. the upkeep up keep of a house. Next level. Independent living? Yeah. Independent living, say age 75, 78. And what's independent living? Usually uh, that's an apartment where you, uh, where you live and then you have a clubhouse with meals. Um, some of them include uh, continuing care, which, such as uh, uh, these three gentlemen own, uh, which would include assisted living if needed, as well as skilled nursing and dementia care if needed. But a lot of people move to independent living that have no mm -hmm. health care services, which is probably how your viewers would look at independent living. So where, where is an independent living uh, place in New York? I mean, do, do you own independent living places? We have some, um, none in the boroughs. I mean, there's a Brookdale community down in Battery Park that's primarily independent living. They would have very nice dining, pull cords potentially in the bathroom, so there's some care on, on premises. In, uh, out in Long Island, there's Peconic Landing, which is uh, in South Holt, way out on the North Fork. There's Jefferson's Ferry in Port Jefferson. 
and then Tom's company and ourselves are um, working on one that's broken ground uh, in Nassau County in Port Washington. And what is that going to be? That's the Amsterdam at Harborside. And t tell my viewers what that is exactly. That's going to be a continuing care retirement community, um, again, including independent living, assisted living, and nursing. How many beds, how many, how many apartments, uh, you know? Uh, Approximately. So, I, I, I don't want to be a sales for you, mm -hmm. but I... No, I, but I, I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> uh, about 220 or so apartments, maybe 40 or so assisted living, and uh, maybe 50 nursing beds. But somewhere in general, in there. there's a ratio between, in a CCRC, a ratio between independent living, skilled mm -hmm. nursing, and assisted living, which pretty much transcends most communities. So like in the one Bill was talking about, maybe there's a one to five ratio of independent living to skilled nursing beds. And five so to, to one. Five to one, yeah. so excuse me. So to go to a community like that, you need to be independent to get in, but as you age in place, you have the full continuum of care to fall back on if you ever need it. And communities have to be 200 plus units to have a community so that people can travel to different different places by themselves, so, so it makes so, economic so sense. So when I hear that, that means that in the, bur the five boroughs of, of New York City, I, I, it would be difficult to have that type of program. Unless you went very vertical. Yeah. Right. Unless you went vertical. And you and could do it in a high rise. New, that's something new that's coming in the industry is urban CCRCs. You'll find them in Chicago. Aren't you doing one in Chicago? We're doing one with Greystone, our subsidiary that's also doing the Amsterdam. It's called the Claire. It's on Michigan Avenue. It's very vertical. It's I think 30, 40 stories tall. But you, but you do own facilities or manage facilities in New York. Yeah, we do. Uh, and tell my audience about those. They're, they're typical assisted living with dementia care. So about 100 units, about 60 to 70,000 square feet. Where are they in the, in the boroughs? We have two in, in Brooklyn. We have one in Sheepshead Bay and one in Mill Basin. We have, I think, the first senior housing community in, on Staten Island, at least one of the first that we just opened in the last year. Um, we've got many on Long Island, but but let's let's the, focus on the Brooklyn and, we, and Staten Island. How many how many uh, rooms how many rooms or apartments are there? We've got about 220 in Brooklyn in the two communities, and about 100 in Staten Island. We'd love to do more. We looked in Queens for years. Um, it's hard to get planning. It's hard to find the land, and frankly, the regulations have been, haven't been that welcoming in New York. But let's, for my audience, because I, I think this is going to be of, you know, we have 50 shows a year. This is going to be one of the most interesting. People want to know, how do they get in? What does it cost, you know, for New York? And then we'll talk about your Connecticut and Pennsylvania. But what is it? I, I, I'm 77 years of age, live and be well. And I want to, I, and I like Mill Basin. I happen to like Sheep, Sheepshead Bay because they're both nice communities. You can go around. You can go visit the water over there. And they, they, they go to this location or they go up to Harborside. What do they do? Could, do they rent it over there? Do they uh, buy? Well, what's it's the It's really rules? different. It's sort of the, it depends on the product. I mean, senior housing encompasses a lot of I'm talking choices. specifically in the two projects that we have, or, and then we'll talk about the others. The, okay, the, one. the communities that we operate are assisted living, at average age about 84. And so these are folks who need help bathing, dressing, activities of daily living. And they would come in without a buy-in. It's a rental product. Month and to month. It would be month to month, and it would cost 150 180 a day, depending on care needs. And we do very... So it's $4,500 to $5,000 sure. based on the basic care needs. Sure. And for that, you get your three meals. You get care help. You have um, activities, amenities. It's you're comparing it really to what it costs to live in your own home, where you, you have to pay utilities, cable, telephone, provide your food, transportation. We provide all that. And they get three meals a day, and yeah. I think and, we and you get the socialization that you would get by he would have social directors and, and other staff on board. There's been a lot of studies that happiness goes up when you move to a senior housing community. Health is better because somebody's watching out for you a little bit. You have the socialization that David talked about. So we think the product um, provides a lot of great benefits to, to folks who, who move in. And, the, and it's like an a la carte service, you're saying? You know, well, it, for, the, for the basic fee for your 5000 a month in Mill Basin, you would get that. And then if, if your care needs increased, you would pay a little more. 
Uh, we have two additional levels of care. And what are the two additional There's levels? There's about $30 a day for the first level, which is when you, your physician, family, you decide you need extra help, you know, more care a day. And, and you get Nurses aid or somebody like additional that? Additional aid. We, we have aides and nurses in the communities, even in assisted living and in the dementia care areas. So the idea is for somebody who wants to stay in the community, um, and, and it, it usually is somebody who either lived there or had a child right in that, in that area. So they want to stay in Brooklyn, they want to stay in Staten Island, they want to stay in Queens, they want to stay in Long Island near their, near their home. They don't want to learn a new, they don't want to learn a new church or synagogue, they don't want to shop in a new place, they want to stay Most people in, want to stay in their community and yep. the draw for this is now, probably now 10 you, miles, now you also, five, you, five miles. Now you yep. also have, uh, you have vans taking them to doctors? All, all of us do. Right. I mean, yes, shopping. Right. So they can Different go out tours. And they, tours and they have this. And, and that's one level. Now, do your facilities in the New York area have nursing homes also? In the Amsterdam, there, there will be, uh, I'm sure, in Davis. I mean, typical CCRC, which is a little different product. It's a bigger, it's, um, think so, of it as the cruise ship of the business. It's, it's so tell me about the cruise ship of the business. <laughs> and you have the cruise ship mm -hmm. of the business. Yeah. Your place is in Connecticut. That's correct. So tell me what that is. It's a. Uh, it's I'm not a, planning, you know, uh, a, but you always like I, to know. I do have an application with me. Thank you. We got a room <laughs> reserved for you. Exactly. Exactly. Already. Yeah. I knew over about you. that. Over you. <laughs> I, I told you I went to visit the other day, Prospect Park places, but it wasn't. I didn't go for the reservation. But even though the banker, my HSH banker, said, you know, did you get the application? I said I did. <laughs> well, the HSH banker was kind enough to lend me some money to build this 200 million dollar community, which spans independent living assisted and nursing all on one campus, 136 acres, out in the country yet close to New York. And the independent apartments range in size from 800 square feet to about 1,800 square feet. So they're really? large That's... independent units. And then as people age, they would avail themselves of either our assisted living community. And what's the size of an assisted living it's, apartment? We have a 20, uh, 20 units of about 550 square foot each. And then we also have a 50-bed nursing home. And as opposed to what uh, Tom is doing, we have an entrance fee buy-in that, so that someone maybe spends five hundred dollars to $600,000 to get a life use of their apartment. They get back 80 to 85% when they leave or they die. And then they pay a monthly service fee. Of how much is the monthly service fee? Let's say 3500 a month. Right. And the key to this community is that if a person ever needs to use the health center, especially if you're a couple, it's a very good deal. You could have one person in the independent units, one person in the nursing home, one person in the nursing, one in the assisted living, and you still pay that same monthly service fee. So nursing home beds in Fairfield County probably go for $11,000 a month. So here you could be in a private pay nursing home for that same $3,500 a month because in effect in a CCRC, the larger community is underwriting the cost of the cares providing to its residents. And that's a little different than you'd find in assisted living or an IL community. And now the facility, the, the Hebrew home for the aged, what do they have? That's up in Riverdale. Do, do they, that's they, a nursing home. That's a nursing home, but didn't they also build an assisted living facility? They may have a wing, right? They may have know. a wing of assisted living. I thought, But they don't have a standalone assisted living. They may have taken a wing and done a memory care unit there. And, and what do you have in the Pennsylvania marketplace? We're building almost an identical product to what David has. Uh, we've got a 100-acre site outside of Philadelphia. We're going to be putting 850 units up, selling them for anywhere from three to 500,000. People, when they go, they can get their money back uh, at full refund. Full, full refund. So yours is a full refund, yep. and you're like 80, 80, 85 percent? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And we give them the opportunity to either uh, get our insurance or else uh, they can have their own, because a lot of people have been purchasing long-term care insurance. And if they have already long-term care insurance from an insurance carrier, we don't have to have them duplicate it. So they can use that if they want to. So part of the mix between entrance fees that are 100% refundable, which is more of the old style, versus mm -hmm. uh, refundable with a lesser amount, you also have to look into what the monthly service fee is because right. it's all part of one package. You so can't you, look at one you, in isolation. So you, you charge a service, a higher service fee? Our, our service fees are in the three to four thousand dollars a month. Yeah. But you know that's that's an interesting discussion because a number of people, uh, the, even the other day, a friend of mine said, "Do you, do you have long-term care?" And I said, yes, my wife and I have long-term care. 
do you, and I think this is a very interesting thing, do you recommend someone having long-term care insurance? Actually, I don't. Uh, I think um, most of the policies are bad. They have a limited amount of um, benefits, number one. Number two, people don't want to move into a nursing home. That's the last place they so want to go. In reality, you have to be in a nursing home to, to no, really they get No, they have help. some. They have some with assisted there living are some as well. Or with home but, care in their house. Right. But really, the the trend in the business is to keep you out of the nursing home and keep you in the assisted living or the independent living uh, parts of the so retirement you would not center. qualify if you have a long term care. I'm just I think long term care insurance. It, it it will usually cover assisted living now, but a, on a limited basis, and it's not really a good bet. But but it's sort of like a belt and suspenders approach. If you're going to move into an assisted living community or a life care community, odds are you're already in effect buying that coverage when you go into that community. So you're really having a duplic duplicative yep. uh, coverage. And also, Michael, things are changing. In other words, it, it used to be that people would move from one level to the next level to the next level. And now sometimes, in some places, you know, if you need care in your apartment, the care is coming to you instead of you moving to the care level. That's, yeah. a, and that's, then, a, that's a big movement. Yeah, and right so now. then the long-term care insurance policy may not cover that. But I think this is really, I'm happy we brought it up because the, you know, many of the, the insurance agents, you know, they, they, when you're young, they sell you life insurance. At 65, they can't sell you disability anymore. Mm -hmm. So we got to figure out the next product. The next product is long-term care. And they basically, you know, it's a scare technique, um, you know, of what you're going to need. And, you know, you'll pay the next 20 years and you're paying this situation and basically you know, you're throwing it away if you don't use it in, in certain aspects. And here, from what I hear uh, on your situation and in some of your places and yours, you go in there and you don't need this. That's you're, correct. You're, you're getting this. And in essence, if you took that money that you, you, you would put the $3,000 per family member over the, the period of time, you could have part of the money to buy in. You know, and, and what's great about it is that, the, for example, the project that uh, Tom and I are working on has actually tax-free bonds. So instead of buying long-term care insurance, you could buy tax-free bonds in our project and get, say, a, you know, five and Wait three quarter percent. Wait a second. I, I, I know this is the... <laughs> that was a very good pick. Wait, you know, that, <laughs> that was a very... I, I that was very smooth. I didn't realize that the Herbert J. Tom, we have to kind of... Okay. Kind of like company <laughs> was selling, right. uh, and what did the bonds pay? Say they pay about five and three quarters percent tax-free, triple tax-free. Triple tax-free. Which yeah. is a lot better than your long-term care insurance policy is going to pay you. The, the, the market's <laughs> evolving for long-term care insurance. I mean, we can all guess what's going to happen. I didn't realize I was doing a sponsor yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should have a coffee <laughs> mug. <you know? laughs> right. You were saying... But the, the, you know, the long-term care insurance pro projects are getting better. You know, what the offerings are getting better. We don't know what's going to happen with Medicare in the future, but I, I think the trend is going to move from government pay ultimately with this tsunami, silver tsunami that's hitting, um, to, to more private pay solutions. All of us have private pay solutions. It's nice for seniors, they can choose to live in a CCRC, to live in a small or assisted living community, move in at whatever stage of life they want and have a variety of products. The problem in this area, one out of every eight seniors lives in the tri-state area. And it is by far the most underserved for senior housing. You know that's that's the problem. So how do we take care of this? I mean, yeah, I mean, New York City and the, the tri-state region has some other problems, uh, which I've always talked on my show, uh, affordable housing for for the working people. How do we take care of this? You know, we're, we're talking about this. You know, fortunately in Fairfield, Connecticut, you'll have your facility in Philadelphia and also in Center City. How do we handle this? And uh, you know, and I, this is this is a problem that I don't think the municipal governments in the local region have truly worked on? How do, I, mean, I think you start with you know, more favorable regulations. New York didn't have an assisted living regulation until 2004. It was the last state in the country to have one. And ARP and Sunrise and, and trade associations pushed very hard for that. That was really good news. But there's still no regulations under, the, under that law three years later. So there's been less assisted living built in New York than any other state certainly of its and size. And the same thing with the CCRCs where mm -hmm. the legislation only came for for-profit CCRCs in the last two years. So New York is really the catch-up state, yet it is the most underserved market probably in the U.S. And planning is the next. It, it, let's streamline some of these projects. Amsterdam took an incredible number of years. How many years? Plus, I mean, you've got to, you yeah. have to have the population accepting the lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle that people have to 
have had people, had relatives in them, and all of a sudden they, they're accepted. But we were talking, you know, we've been together the, a number of times. The Philadelphia market's been a CCRC uh, place for about 40 years. Yeah, but it, the New York City market has not. But right. we, in the 1990s, you know, it was like the tech boom, I hate to say, with the dot com. In the, 19, the late 1990s, early 2000s, the big thing was senior housing, senior care, senior services. Mm -hmm. And then the world came to a little temporary turmoil. Well, right. it's, you have to look at the, the markets. That, you know, you have to look at the segments in that the came In the 90s, turmoil. there were 18 public companies that were funded by, by Wall Street. In, in the infinite wisdom at the time, it was the baby booms getting old. Let's build a lot of senior housing. Let's go where we can go really quickly. And so the, none of the markets here got overbuilt. No, the markets but, but got the, overbuilt where, where it was easy to build. But right, the product but, got, that got overbuilt was the one that had the fewer hurdles to entry and low barriers. So, for I, example, the CCRC marketplace was never overbuilt anywhere because, as Tom was about to say, how many years did it take Amsterdam House to get going? Well, I think it was I think it was eight to ten years yeah. to actually to break so that, ground. That, that's a very long gestation period. Another way of people helping, the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation, uh, owns a vacant hospital in Queens that they have uh, that they're going to lease to a continuing care retirement center called Skyline Commons that's now in the development stage. And what will be there? So this sounds interesting. So that'll be a, a continuing care retirement center high rise. They'll have views of Manhattan and so forth. It'll be and, and that'll be nice. private pay? It'll be private pay. It'll be like David's facility and like the Amsterdam, where people pay an entrance fee With to come bonds in. attached, Bill? There'll be some tax-free bonds, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> uh, most likely, yes. The problem with affordability, we, we did a project in Virginia, and we said we we're going to attack affordability. So we had the government give us the land for free. We, we, had, we twisted the arms of our contractors and architects, and we basically did it at cost, and we agreed to manage it for a cost. And it still costs $80 a day, because labor, Labor but is eighty dollars a day is twenty four hundred dollars a month, as opposed to what I heard before that it's a basic close to five thousand dollars a in month. New York, in, in New York, in, right. in Virginia, Let's scale it down for the market he in, was in. In Virginia, yeah. at that point, you know, our average daily rate might have been closer to three thousand a month. I mean, so you didn't but, get much but, of a discount. You know, let, let's look at it this way: you know, if a person has a home, they can afford to buy in to your facility. That's or, correct. Or sell correct. it and move into an assisted living rental. Right. Correct. Correct. What happens to the person who does not have the home? And rents. Let's say as a renter. Uh, in, in most parts of Manhattan, the rents for a very nice apartment are equal or less to what an assisted living or an IL building would be. So you don't have the buy-in necessarily, the money to do a buy-in, an entrance fee, but you certainly would be able to do a rental. Now, do you see um, the people who come to your places are they, do you think they're happier to buy in or are they happier and you know, Bill, uh, with all the experience of the four of you, do people prefer to buy in to buy safety in. Or, the, or do they prefer to, uh, to pay the monthly rent? Everybody's different. Yeah, right. and it depends on age too. The older you are, the more likely you are to rent as opposed to the younger right, you are. Right, but then again, we discussed this before, in a CCRC, the average age on entry is let's say 76. In Tom's community, maybe it's, I don't know, 82 or right. somewhere there. Mm -hmm. So in that space, there are people who are more mobile, more independent, and who are used to, let's say, more of the buy-in model. And as people get older, more of the products offered are probably rental than the buy-in model, That's I'd correct. say. Yep. And, and what is the, uh, the occupancy or the waiting list once a facility is open? When the cruise ship opens, once the cruise ship we, opens. We, we get like a three-year waiting list. And sales full. Yeah, the place is full, and, and we stop taking names because the turnover in a continuing care retirement community is very small on a percentage basis on a stabilized building. Right. Maybe it's 10 to 11 percent, yet if you look at Tom's buildings, I, I think it's much, much higher than that. In assisted living, at the average length of stay is about two years. And so, so that's about 40 some odd percent turnover, turnover every year. Right. But so our yeah, yeah. Living, yeah. But I, I tell you, our, for our 450 communities, average occupancy 92, 93 percent. So the, the demand is there across and the, across and, and the, the average age. Independent living is probably 82 because uh, we, we have a lot of that in some CCRCs. So it's, it's about a five year difference between somebody who comes in independent living and somebody who comes in assisted now, living. Now you have the dementia in, we do. in many of your places. I do also. And, we do also. Uh, and 
you have gone out and you've gone, you have hospice also. We do. Now, when did you, do you have hospice? No. So the, the hospice care in how many of the communities you have? All of, all of our communities, and I would bet all of people here's communities have hospice. It's a government, it's a Medicare benefit, it's a great um, benefit. But and it's not it, as he would be thinking that hospice is where no. people go. No, hosp hospice in your, because these are, these senior housing properties are the resident's home. I so realize. they could get hospice in, in their home if they lived you know, on 38th way. Street or they could get hospice in their home on Sunrise of Staten Island. We, so we always have had hospice in and our decision was we, we wanted to, to own the hospice company. So we bought a company last year that in some of our markets provides the hospice care directly. Again, Medicare pays for it. And so it's our way to, to standardize it, to make sure the residents are getting the best hospice they can. What, what is the, you know, if you said you opened the place in Staten Island, how long does it take, I know the cruise ship, when the cruise ship is there, <laughs> how long does it get, take, you don't have the cruise ship, how long does it take to get the hotel to occupancy? Since well, you have the hotels as opposed I mean, to, the, to, to the, the Queen Mary over here. One of the benefits of the market being underserved is everything fills very quickly in New York. Staten Island may break a record. We, we, we pre-sale for about six months before it opens. And we, so we have a list of depositors. You can't have long waits because these people have care needs. So, but it will be, it will be less than a year for a very large right, but I But I noticed in the New York Times, I think, Harborside or Amsterdam, you know, you have uh, continuous ads in the New York Times and there's more well, awareness. Sure. Yeah, and Michael, the best time to really get into them because you don't want to wait till they're full and you have to wait three or four years right. like at David's place. The best time to get in is during this pre-sale time when there's a lot of inventory to choose from and you, it, it's, you put down 10% and then you move in when the building is finished and that way you can assure yourself the best selection. You know, there's one thing you mentioned that I just want to bring back to this hospice for a second, which I don't think your viewers would know. At a normal life care community, they also I also take in outside people into either the assisted living right. or the nursing home component because when I open up our doors, our own residents aren't using all of our services. So when I said we don't provide hospice from the outside world, we don't take people in for hospice specifically, but for our own residents as they age in place, they do that. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I think you'll find in Amsterdam is that they'll take in people from the outside just into the nursing home or assisted living without any of the buying into the community. So you really have to kind of think about how you could access some of these communities mm -hmm. other than through the normal right. front door, so to speak. You know, 30 minutes you really can accomplish, so I'm, I'm certain that Later on in this season, or next this se definitely this season, well, I'm going to do another senior show and invite you, you guys back because I've got a lot of interesting education, and I know my viewers, and I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Reese, Mr. Sims, Mr. Newell, and Mr. Civic for being here. Um, see you next week. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Major funding for this program is provided by grants from HSH Nordbank and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, Allied Partners, Murray Hill Properties, Bank of America, SJP Properties, Greenberg Traurig. Additional funding for this program is made possible by grants from Arbor Realty Trust, BRT Realty Trust, Burden LLP, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Habitats, City Investment Fund, Cushman and Wakefield, Eastern Consolidated, Essex Capital Partners, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, McSam Hotel Group, Must Development LLC, Newmark Knight Frank, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal Inc., Signature Bank, Sidney Fetner Associates, Studley, Stonehenge Partners, Swig Equities, Extreme Contracting and Deconstruction.